Fallout is shockingly well made and actually entertaining for a TV series based on a video game franchise, and actually has a lot of depth contained within it. This is our chance to make war obsolete. The show is jam-packed with symbolism, allegory, and many socio-political, philosophical type questions. Like, why the pursuit of utopia is one of the most dangerous forces for all of humanity, and why the worship of science and knowledge at any and all costs is equally as dangerous. What was the experiment in 33? I'm going to speculate into the use of symbolism and the deeper meaning within the show. Take what makes sense to you and ignore the rest. You've been warned. Vault 33 in the start of the series operates as a sort of controlled utopian Garden of Eden, where the residents operate in blissful ignorance. We're naive down there. Innocent but protected from the corruption of the outside world, their core beliefs built around the promise of a future rebuilt utopia on the surface. When interacting with the raiders posing as Vault 32, this starts off a chain of events causing the residents to essentially fall out of their blissful ignorance, or metaphorical perfect garden. When showing the flashback scenes of Lucy and her mother, you see a young Lucy holding an apple at these key revealing moments. This fruit of knowledge symbolism is used in countless shows and films, which ties into Edenic symbolism, a popular concept within Western culture. The main character's name being Lucy is not an accident. Lucifer the angel rebelled against heaven and gave humanity, or Adam and Eve, the fruit of knowledge leading to their downfall. Lucy, as well as her mother, was in pursuit of the knowledge behind what was really going on with the vaults. Vault tech themselves in pursuit of unlimited knowledge also led to the downfall of humanity. The worship of science and knowledge in order to say extend the human lifespan, inducing genetic mutations, messing around with radiation, playing with the natural biological order of things, you could metaphorically call Luciferianism. I'm sure that type of word is going to trigger some simpletons who are opposed to thinking, but just attempt to follow the analogy. It's the act of rebelling or attempting to rewrite the order of nature or how God designed humans and the natural world via the worship of knowledge and science. This utopian scientific experiment is the entire premise of the show and the downfall of humanity. It is the reason why vault -Tec set off the atomic bombs themselves, to turn humans into lab rats in the pursuit of scientific knowledge with the goal of becoming essentially godlike, with the ability to wield more and more power, either socio-political power, technological power, or genetic power. A scientific dictatorship, if you will. The ends justifying the means, leading to horrific actions. Every faction within the wasteland willing to do whatever they need because they believe that they are right and they're the ones that can save the world. Let's look at some of the numerology contained within the show to attempt to back up some of these wild ideas. When Betty plans on repopulating Vault 32, we see Club 33 residents, I mean Vault 33 residents, walking in these hallways. We see room 664 and 665 and 662. So what is the camera at at this point? Which room is the camera at? I'll let you answer that. This is shown while flashbacking back and forth between the horrific stuff that Chat and Norm discovered before it was magically cleaned up in some vast conspiracy. 666 symbolism is used in many films to enhance the dark, scary, and evil aspects of the show on a subconscious level. On the opposite ends of things, sevens can also be used. At the start of the first episode, when Lucy is still in her ignorant bliss and the bride-to-be, she walks out of room 727. But when she's going to do it with her evil, monster, good-looking, short-term, radioactive husband, it's room 626. Sixes and sevens are loosely played with numerologically in many shows and movies for anybody who pays attention. Sixes when... Bad things are happening, and then sevens when lucky or good things are happening. Generally speaking, directors don't leave anything to chance. They understand the archetypal nature of numbers. Up until I was six, I really thought that the big light in our farm was the sun. Little six-year-old Lucy again holding an apple when revealing this information. And at the end of the show, who does Lucy end up rebelling against? Her father, Hank McLean, the person that created her and was overseeing the world of Vault 33. You see how this can be an allegory or a metaphor for Lucifer rebelling against God in heaven? 
I'm sure there are a lot of midwits who have already clicked off the video, but I know metaphors are hard. Everyone knows who Moldaver is. 33 is obviously a huge number within Masonic symbolism, and anybody who doesn't know that is just clueless. It's said that Jesus was 33 at the point of death and resurrection. We have 33 vertebrae of the spine. So 33 can have an association with spiritual or mental, or in this case, scientific enlightenment. It's like 33 vertebrae of the spine up into the mind or the brain or the head, right? That Lucy is carrying around that everybody's after. Everybody's after the mind of uh, the scientist. 33 can also just be an aesthetically, visually pleasing number. I can only speculate as to why 33 was chosen for the primary vault number. Pure speculation. Maybe I'm wrong. 23 also shows up in a lot of entertainment. When we first see Dr. Wilzig carrying CX-404, we see 23 prominently displayed behind him. Perhaps 23 chromosomes because of the genetic experimentation these doctors are engaging in. Bucky in Civil War was kept in 23, just to point that out. It shows up in countless shows and films. The most obvious being Jim Carrey's movie, where two is divided by three. So you can take of that what you will. There is an element of DEI and wokeness in the show to a degree like most things today, but it was entertaining enough to where I don't really think it actually affected the show and the writing it's sci-fi and not historical, so I don't really care that that stuff was in it. The show managed to balance a lot of elements like satirical humor, sci-fi, gory action, and even horror at times. I think it pulled off a balance of all the different elements of the Fallout world and the Wastelands. Maximus or Denzel Washington Jr., he literally has the same exact like deadpan stare that Denzel has. I really found him to be a likable character. I think a lot of the main characters worked well with each other. It's the main reason why the show actually worked because all of the characters were likable, even the ghoul, even though he's brutal and terrible, but you almost empathize with him because of his connection to the main plot line in the past. I do find it funny that in the wasteland, the Brotherhood is capable of any form of ruthless violence and there is just lawlessness everywhere, but they are sure to get people's pronouns right in this post-apocalyptic hellscape. You're aware of their injury? Yes. Where the birth rates would be needed to be kept up. But I wonder if transgenderism is acting as a precursor to transhumanism. And if we are being experimented on by vault tech, I mean Amazon. This show does act as a reflection of how in modern society, we're all kind of lab rats being tested and experimented on, right? I did find the show to be entertaining. And if the show can act as a warning to avoid a nuclear war and post-apocalyptic collapse of civilization and skepticism towards scientific so-called authority that seeks profits above all, then maybe that could be a good thing. I just try to present these things as a journalist would so that the viewer can draw their own conclusions. Anyways, I think that's all I have to say for today. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, comment below. Thank you very much and bye.